It's time for the cover price top 10 on this Tuesday. I hope it's Tuesday and I'm dropping this at the right time. We're going back two years for Tuesday. That just happened to work out that way. That was not planned. All right, guys, we're going to take a look at this top 10 from two years ago. How were those books two years ago price-wise and how are they doing today? Before we get into it, you know what to do by now, I think. You know, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment. The comments help, guys. Whether you like these lists, dislike these lists, the comments help, the thumbs up help. Cost you nothing. Zero. Uh, but for you guys who do buy and sell comic books, I want to bring your attention down to the description. There is a link for GeminiComicSupply.com. Get yourself 10% off your Gemini mailers and any other kind of supplies you want to get from Gemini Comic Supply. I think it's very Gary 10. 10% off. Trust me when I tell you it adds up. All right, we're going to get into this list. Yesterday we went one year. Today we're going two years and we're going to start with number 10. This is DMZ number one. Two years ago, fans were met with the first trailer of for HBO's DMZ about a futuristic American Civil War. That caused a spike in sales, causing this book to trend at $35 for near-mint raw copies, while 9-8 copies topped out close to 400 At the time, there were a lot of mixed reviews due to heavy departures from the source material. Well, collector's apprehension was valid as the series hit max and didn't fare much better. Currently sitting around a 50% approval rating, the fan base heavily do dogged dogged my goodness dogged the series two years later the book is currently trending at six bucks for a near mint raw copy and 75 dollars for a 9.8 it's a bust across the board and is a prime example of what can happen when creators stray too far from the source material let me let me put it this way if you you can't get away from the source material you just can now however if you're a fan of the series now is a solid time to pick up the first issue as pricing is down considerably. Don't expect it to pay dividends in the future unless the new film Civil War is a box office smash. Then collectors may look at the series again, but don't hold your breath. If you want this book, it's not going to go much down much, and it certainly can't really go up much. I'd be very surprised. Let's get to number nine. This is Timeless number one, the Mark Buckingham third print. Timeless was all about that wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Fans were intrigued, but especially so because of this book. It features a female Black Panther with white hair on the cover, which some theorized was the child of Storm and T'Challa. Or I should say, yeah. Uh, books began to trend at $20 near mint raw copies, and, it be and with it being too new for CGC 9.8s to have hit the market. But as quickly as the excitement peaked, it flattened. Nothing came of the character, a timeless tale, and fair market value has dropped considerably. When CGC 9.8 copies hit the market, it topped out around 55 bucks, barely more than what it cost to get it graded. Uh, and that was in August of that year. We've only seen that trend continue with the past two years. Near Mint copies now trending around $6, essentially the cover price. 9.8 copies now trending at 16, well below case cost. It's a bust, but... There may be a silver lining. We have evidence of fan excitement for the future potential of the character. If Marvel ever taps into it, we could see it rise again. With it being cheap currently, it might be a good book to take a second look at if the price is right, considering it also features several minor first appearances. So you almost want this book not because of the character, that character, but other minor first appearances. Six bucks, guys. Easy. Now let me also say this. Don't do what I tell you to do. If I give you advice, don't take it and run with it. Take my information with a grain of salt, okay, and and do your own research, do your own information. I say this in almost every single one of these videos. Do your own research, okay? Buy what you like, buy what you're interested in. If you want to take on chan a chance on something, do your own research, okay? Let's get to number eight. This is Batman number two from 2011. In the two years since Warner Brothers released The Batman, we've seen this book come back down to earth. Before that, while fans were fresh off the film, it sold like hotcakes. Near Mint Raw copies were trending around $30, while 9.8 copies were trending for upwards of $270. It features the first appearance of talent, a fantastic foe for Batman, and the first mention of the Court of Owls. There was heavy speculation this was the direction Matt Reeves would go next, but mum is the, mum's the word since then. 
We've got a few tidbits and a major shift in studios, James Gunn's DCU, but nothing substantial related to the film, which has led to this book trending at $14 for Near Mint Raw and $65 for a CGC 9.8. It's a bust, but that could change quickly. The market has always favored issue number six, but should Reeves opt to incorporate the Court of Owls in Batman 2? This might be the book fans opt to revisit. It's substantially cheaper than issue six and can still be found routinely in the wild, while issue six is often stuck behind the vendor table on display. If you're a fan of this run, it won't hurt to snag a copy. You have Talon in two, Court of Owls in six. If you haven't read the new 52, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the new 52 Batman by Capullo and Snyder. Snyder is the writer, Capullo is the artist. Read it beginning to end. It is in omni form paperback form, hardcover, floppy. It's out there. It's affordable. If you're a Batman fan or a fan of good storytelling, this is a great story. And I'm not just talking about Court of Owls. I'm talking about the entire 52 issue run. Awesome. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've read it and if you enjoyed it or not. There are arcs that I enjoyed more in the 52 issue run, more than Court of Owls. I did actually really like uh, Endgame, which was, by the way, named Endgame before Avengers Endgame. And there's Endgames before this, but uh, just an amazing story beginning to end. Uh, Capullo and Snyder's new 52 Batman run. Uh, let's go to number, who, by the way, will be at Terrificon. Greg Capullo, Scott Snyder will both be at Terrificon in August. Can't wait for that show. Let's go to number, what are we on? Six, seven, seven, number seven. Seven. Two, uh, this is Star Wars Darth Vader number six. Just two short years ago, Disney was on fire releasing projects left and right. We had just gotten the trailer for Obi-Wan, which displayed the Inquisitors and the Grand Inquisitor. That caught... Oh, I'm sorry. Inquisis, Inquisitor... In, oh, yeah, yeah, I can't. My head. That caused this book to explode with near-mint raw copies trending at $86, while CGC 9A copies were trending at 600 Since then, we got Obi-Wan, which was liked but not loved. Disney has pumped the brakes hard on numerous projects, including putting some Star Wars projects on ice. The future of the Inquisitor, in, Inquisitors, my God, there we go, is up in the air, which never bodes well for books such as this. Two years later, this book is trending at $21 for a near-mint raw copy, and 9.8s have tumbled to $95. It's a bust, but a little clarity from Disney could change that quickly. It's unlikely to reach the heights like it did two years ago. But not all hope is lost. The Inquisitors are a fascinating piece of Star Wars lore with a ton of potential. If you pick up a copy, that's what you're banking on for the future returns. If you're just a fan, it's a solid time to grab a copy as there is currently little hype surrounding this book and those characters. I loved Obi-Wan. However, I watched every single episode combined. So it almost was like a two- I, I broke it up over a couple days, but the whole series was out and I watched everything in order, not having to wait week in and week out. And let me tell you, I enjoyed it significantly more than a lot of my friends who thought it was just okay. I really enjoyed it. So just, just I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but let's get to number six. This is Star Wars, The High Republic Adventures, number two. Two years ago, fans quickly shifted their attention from issue number one to this issue, number two, primarily of the first full appearance of Marcion Rowe, Marcion Rowe. Rowe had the potential to be a massive adversary of the Jedi, causing this book to trend for $20 in a near mint raw copy and $150 for a CGC 9.8. Two years later, the sentiment has shifted again with fans keeping tabs on issue number one more heavily. That's primarily due to the numerous other first appearances in issue one that pair nicely with the first cameo appearance of Rowe. It's a two, it's it's a two birds one stone scenario for most collectors, causing this book to currently trend at five dollars for near mint raw. Nine eight copies coming in at fifty three. It's a bust, but like all Star Wars books featuring a heavily liked character, the potential to see it rise again rarely fades. For the price, it's wise to pick up first appearances in Star Wars books, but keep in mind it may never turn into anything worthwhile. Take a flyer on this book if it crosses your path. 50 bucks for a first appearance, 9-8. I mean, it seems okay. Again, take what I say with a grain of salt. Do your own research. But however, if you really truly want this book in a 9.8, it'd probably be a safer bet to buy it in a 9.8 for 50 bucks than buy a raw near mint copy for 6 to 10 and then send it off to CGC and hope you get a 9.8. 
If you want the book graded to display or to store, remember there's a million different ways to collect comic books. Uh, I say it all the time too. That's what makes this hobby so great. There are so many different ways to collect. Don't let anyone tell you you're collecting wrong. No one should tell you how to collect. Let's get to number four. I hope we're on number four. I think No, 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 no. Time out. Number five. This is Captain Carter number one, the animation variant, the one in 25. It will be hard to replicate the hype Captain Carter experienced two years ago. We got this book and had an appearance set in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness with numerous other rumors floating about. One big one was a live action adaptation in the near future. That caused this book to explode with near mint raw copies hitting 60 bucks while 9.8 copies weren't available yet. After Doctor Strange hit theaters, 9.8 copies shot up hitting highs of $560. Two years later, rumors have cooled significantly with nothing concrete in the works regarding a live action Captain Carter. There are, however, still rumors we may see a live action rendition by 2027. That's an eternity away, which is partially to blame for the declining value of this book. Near Mint Raw copies now trend for 43, 98 copies hovering around 150. This book is a bust, but the gap is not as wide as it may seem. If anything concrete hits, it may sniff the values it achieved two years ago. If not, it will remain a heavily collected book due to the first appearance of Captain Carter. If you love it, collect it. So the one thing I'll say about this book is it's a high ratio one in 25 of a title that i don't know if a lot of people were collecting uh so they're not there's not a ton of copies out there just something to think about if you're interested in this book now we get to number four this is batman number 28 fans were gearing up for gotham knights both in video game format and on tv two years ago this book was hyped up thanks to the casting call for harper row while Harper Row appears in Batman 7, she takes on a persona of Bluebird in this issue. That excited fans, causing this book to trend to $15 near mint raw copy and $160 for $165 for CGC 9.8. Wow, things change in such a short period. The game was a dud and the show bombed. It got canceled after one season and there isn't even a hint it will be returning. Bluebird was done dirty, not even appearing in costume in the show. That caused a slight tumble of this book, currently trending at $9 for near raw copy and $45 for a 9.8. Bluebird has fan has a fan base, but a logjam of cool characters is waiting to be adapted in the new DCU. That likely pushes Bluebird down the list of appearing. Grab a copy if you're a fan, as it's relatively cheap. Otherwise, stay clear. This book likely won't see heights like before for the foreseeable future. However, this book is still part of the Capullo Snyder, Snyder Capullo New 52 Batman run, and it's a great run. Go out and read it. Let's get to number three. This is King Conan number three. Two years ago, this book was mired in controversy from the start. Jason Aaron opted to give the supernatural princess the name of Motaoka, the true name of Pocahontas. That caused quite an uproar, resulting in a public apology from Aaron and a commitment to changing the name from then on and in all digital copies. I I definitely mispronounced that. Collectors rushed to grab a copy with the error, propelling this book to $25 for a near-mint raw copy with no CGC 9.8 copies yet to hit the market. In the two years since, the community has nearly forgotten, as Jason Aaron, who will also be at Terrificon, by the way, has kept to his word and never touched the name again. That satisfied many, leaving this book behind. Near-mint raw copies are now trending for 5 bucks, not a single sale in our database for a CGC 9.8 or any graded copy for that matter. This book had little going up, going for it outside of the controversy, and two years later, we will see ramifications of that in the aftermarket, which we are. It's a total bust, and books it's a book to stay away from unless controversy is your thing. Copies are still out there, but even six bucks is a big ask for this one. Controversy usually kind of pushes a book for a little bit, and then the controversy settles, goes away, and the book comes back down to earth. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for the FOMO. Let's get to number two. The Spectacular Spider-Man, number 116. Two years ago, fans, comic fans were less jaded and skeptical that they are, uh, than they are now. Many bought into this book featuring the first appearance of the foreigner when it was reported he would appear in, Cra- in the Craven film. It was trending 
at $103 for a near mint raw copy and up to $405 for a CGC 9.8 in late March of 2022. However, a lot has happened since then. The fan base has shifted and opts to vet purchases more thoroughly. Morbius and Madam Web soured a lot of collectors on Sony driven properties, including Craven. And by extension, this book, Near Mint Raw, co- and by extension, this book, uh, Near Mint Raw copies now trend at 17, while 98 copies trend at 120. That's a hefty drop, subsequently leading this book to be a bust. But there is still hope. Craven appears not to be taking itself too seriously and is filling the void fans have been eager for since Logan. A little comic adjacent gratuitous violence. If the film makes enough sense, we could see this book rebound. It could see new lows if it's another flop like the previously mentioned films. Tread carefully with this one if you're in the market for a copy. You could probably find this book in dollar bins, guys. This is... Don't go crazy for this one. And before we get to number one, I want to remind everyone to check out CoverPrice.com and use the discount code down below. Get yourself a cheap subscription for the time being. With that, let's get to number one. This is West Coast Avengers number 46. In 2022, fans were gearing up for She-Hulk and this book fell into their crosshairs. The reason is due to a leaked audition request for She-Hulk, for for a She-Hulk character called Dr. Revive. Fans concluded it could only be Mr. Immortal they were searching for. With fan attention shifting to his first appearance in this book, Near Mint Raw copies were going for $21.98, hovering around $365. Two years later, we know how that went with She-Hulk. Underwhelming audiences and Mr. Immortal being quite depressing in the show. He's been relegated back to a D-list hero, at least regarding the attention he receives on the aftermarket. Currently, near mint raw copies are trending for $10, while CGC 9.8 copies are trending for $130. This book is a bust unless Marvel can elevate another team of lesser-known heroes as they did with the Guardians of the Galaxy. We will unlikely see this book hit new heights. Steer clear of this current prices as it's lurking in the dollar bins, just waiting for collectors like you to snag it up for a tenth of the cost. It's got to be in dollar bins. Another one of these dollar bin books, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're coming back tomorrow, if I could edit these things quick enough. We're going back three years. So Monday was one year. Tuesday was two years. Wednesday, three years. We're going back three years. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep it comics.